and your berries. Your berries. <laughs> He's a second generation cultivator that doesn't always believe in second chances. <laughs> also, the founder of Special Teams Consulting. Y'all know who it is. Up next, the Sebastopol stage, stage, sage himself, Yaro Kubrin. And the crowd goes wild. The crowd goes as wild as they can, digesting after Christmas and. Happy belated uh, uh, Hanukkah too, man. We didn't give enough uh, love to Hanukkah this year, man. So big yeah, up to so Hanukkah. I'll, I'll use it when we come back from the next commercial. I'll use my Hanukkah screensaver in the back and spin your dreidel, baby. Represent, represent. So good morning, good morning. Tuesday, December twenty sixth. This is Yarrow Kubrin. Hi at nine news. My article today is about New uh, New Jersey. Nuns fail to block new Atlantic City pot dispensary just feet from a covenant. Nuns fail the Mississippi one. <laughs> the, the, You're doing the Mississippi. the Mississippi one. I'm doing the nuns. Oh, all right. That didn't sound right, but you know what I meant. Oh, boy. Okay, oh boy. there's no communion way for a ball. But anyway, the nuns. nuns fail to block new Atlantic City pot dispensary just feet from com covenant. Catholic nuns in Atlantic City, New Jersey, have lost out on their bid to block a cannabis dispensary just 150 feet from their covenant as local officials seek to make the area the pot capital of the East Coast. The Casino Reinvestment Development Authority, which acts as the city's planning agency within the tourism district, recently approved two planned dispensaries, including the one by the covenant, a business that would take the place of a former dry cleaners. Members of the Franciscan Sisters of the Renewal Covenant on Mississippi Avenue in the gambling mecca have argued that they host classes, including some for teenagers, and sobriety meetings at their location, and therefore should not have a dispensary so close. They added in the CRDA that they were concerned about crime escalating in the area as a result of a new dispensary, too. I'm actually Dutch, so I grew up in a country where marijuana was legalized, and I've seen a lot of things over the years, Sister Joseph Van Munster said at a November hearing, according to a transcript obtained by the press of Atlantic City. She said there were already problems in the neighborhood with illicit drug use and alcohol use and argued that a new dispensary could be harmful for those dealing with substance abuse issues and working towards recovery. <laughs> but all the casinos not. But the CRDA approved the application for the proposed new dispensary near the Covenant. New Jersey law does not prohibit cannabis dispensaries from opening near such sites as it does with schools. Neither the Covenant nor CRDA responded to post requests for comments on Monday. The approval of the pot dispensary near the Covenant was the second time the board has okayed such a business in Atlantic City despite concerns from church officials, according to the press. Over the summer, members of the Chelsea Baptist Church spoke out against a planned cannabis business about a block away, but that too wound up being approved by the board. They don't want to go anywhere else near the casino, but they don't care where else they go. They don't want them anywhere near the casino, but they don't care where else they go, Pastor Tom Weir told the press in September. He claimed that the board simply told church members to install video cameras or hire a tow truck company to keep unwanted vehicles off their lot when they expressed concerns about people smoking weed near their place or a place of worship or committing crimes. It seemed to me at the meeting they were all gung-ho, Weir said, of board support of the move. As far as I know, if it's there, we just have to put up with it. The CRDA rarely disapproves applications for new cannabis businesses in Atlantic City, which was already approved which already has approved applications for indoor weed farms, a women-owned dispensary inside a former church, and an Amsterdam-style cannabis lounge. Mayor Marty Small's administration sees these new businesses as a powerful economic engine, potentially bringing in new jobs and new investments into the city. My focus is to make Atlantic City great, to make Atlantic City and the East Coast a hub for cannabis, Kashawn Cash McKinley told the city's cannabis czar. Per capita, the cannabis businesses that have already received approvals as of April would make Atlantic City the densest cannabis city in the state, according to the outlet. This is Yarrow Kubrin, High at Nine News. I'd like to know what you guys think. I think the names in this... And this yeah. story alone make it a great uh, candidate for the next awesome Tubi movie. <laughs> you know, you have the nuns being shut down <laughs> by Mayor Marty Smalls, <laughs> the cannabis czar, Kayshawn Cash McKinley. <laughs> should, we, should, we, should, we call him, should we call him Mighty Smalls? 
I mean, smalls are the most popular uh, popular skew right now. Not to there's, so there's so much potential. That is so funny. <laughs> yes. And of course, his name is Smalls, and he's in Atlantic City. Yes. I mean, this is this is yeah. an interesting one because we have these these sensitive use setbacks, and the majority of the time that includes any church of any denomination. But it sounds like this co- covenant, 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 convent. Sorry, I don't I don't kick it with a lot of nuns anymore. Convents and convicts anymore. Which ones you right. anymore? That's a, that that was when I was wild and crazy. Okay, I'm I'm mellow now. Okay, but but there are these sensitive use setbacks. And and the, the ones that seem to always uh, have consensus is schools and churches, right? And so how you define schools becomes that next step. Does that include preschools? Does that include only schools on the first floor? What about schools on the second floor that don't interact with street traffic? Uh, yada, yada, yada. And so with these places of religious worship, if you're talking about a place that doesn't include access to the public for praying— then it probably doesn't fall under those same sensitive use setbacks. The only challenge that I have is this idea that um, this could interfere with uh, their recovery activities. I could see if there was odor from a consumption lounge, but if you're in like Sin City East and you're surrounded by a lot of casinos, it seems like there's probably a lot of sinning going on uh, with or without cannabis dispensaries. I would think that they would welcome the sin because that would just give them more people to reach out to, to, to evangelical to. Right. Increases their flock. Yeah. Feed exactly. the flock. Yeah. <laughs> flock yeah. funnel. It's just more flock people, funnel. people for them. Yeah. It's good for the goose generate. and always good for the gander. It's, it's, it's more new, people it's, for them to reach out to. It's guys and dolls should start. Dispensary will start start selling bio Jesus. We'll be out there on the uh, on the street pimping it out. Mm-hmm. Maybe oh, maybe you know how, I mean, you got to watch you know, out uh, out there in Atlanta. I'm, I'm not a, and this yeah. I'm I'm not a huge fan of these Benzinga stories because they always take and redistribute from other like like larger stories because um, they took like a like sister what's her name uh, um, uh, uh, sister Joseph Van Munster. They just took like that the, the bullshit quote that they use in there. It says sister Joseph Van Munster, drawing on her Dutch experiments uh, with legal marijuana, told the CRDA at a hearing that a new dispensary could be harmful uh, for people dealing with the substance abuse issues, working towards recovery. And then her quote that they used in here is, "I'm actually Dutch, so I grew up in a country where marijuana is legalized. So I've seen a few things. What has she seen?" A few things. She's seen <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Things. I mean, she's, she's seen <laughs> early. She's seen a few things. Right? <laughs> I mean, she's definitely seen some shit. Wait, it's hold on. Rico, when you are none and hard, when you are none and hard, when you are nose to the book, when you are proselytizing, when you are filling the funnel of the flock, you don't know. You don't know what she's seen. I've seen a thing or two in my day. Oh, I tell you what. You think oh, she's yeah. seen a priest diddling thing. a small boy, right? Oh. <laughs> oh. 